You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Each week, Cheryl will feature and discuss the many challenges of those living with disabilities, along with the various issues that are faced by their families that are caring for them. So now, please welcome the host of Courage to Overcome, Cheryl Jennings. Welcome to tonight's program. I'm Cheryl Jennings, your host on Courage to Overcome. And it is my hope that this program will offer you a lot of support and hope that whatever challenge that you're going through, that you can do that. And the purpose of trying to interview people is to find out how did they handle some of the challenges that they've had that are tremendous? And then how did they move forward? What lessons did they learn? And by learning what they've done and what they've learned, it helps provide hope to people that are maybe just now going through a problem that they've already said, I I was able to manage that. I believe that all of us have got things that are truly a burden for us. And if we just knew each other well enough, we wouldn't have those masks on where we just pretend that everything's fine. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'll see you next time and leave it at that. We would truly want to know more about how each other handles the difficulties and be more supportive to one another. We seem to have so much of the world in a hate mode lately that it's very disturbing to me to think that that may be the only message that a lot of people do hear, especially if they listen to the news very much. And I want to tell you that life can be much better if you're not focused on some of the things that are so negative that are happening that really might not affect you. And I'm not saying bury your head in the sand, but I'm saying that there are wonderful people who have offered ways of dealing with situations that would help us if we could just hear their stories I just lost my mother just in the last couple of weeks, but as I have been going through a lot of her papers and things, it has been such a pleasure to me to go back and to see the notes that she took on caregiving. And I've actually found articles that she had published in magazines in different places about the joy of caregiving, because you see, she took care of my father, who became an invalid after a heart surgery went wrong. And she took care of him for about almost 15 years. But my mother was such a good example of ways to deal with some of the problems that we face. And I think that when we could get to know maybe our parents, our grandparents, and understand a little bit more about the challenges that they went through, we would certainly be amazed at the stamina and the strength and the courage that each one has had in the past to be able to deal with challenges of financial problems, losses of jobs, changes in the economic situation where we've gone from an industrial nation to now we're technology. And if you're not up on technology almost on a daily basis, you're left behind so fast. And it is difficult to keep up with everything that's going on. But I want to tell you, it's possible. And it's possible to go through these challenges that we face and to be able to offer hope to other people and to say, it's okay. We are going to be going through the cycle of life where we do lose our parents, but then we have other family members that we know we welcome into our lives as newborn babies. And as much as we miss our parents and our grandparents and those that have gone before us, 
there are lessons that we can learn and we can share with one another. I, I'm often, often uh, amazed when I hear a story of someone who's had so many challenges that it just makes my head spin trying to figure out how did they deal with all of this? And when they can say that they've done it and, and they've been able to manage these things with a smile on their face and that they're saying, oh, I don't want you to feel sorry for me. I want to just let you know that, yes, I've gone through that, but I'm not stuck there. I'm not in the mode of having to relive that situation over and over and over. I'm moving forward. I'm doing more for other people. And we know that there is a value of one person doing something that is truly amazing. And there are so many examples in our world of people who have lived, who've been amazing at maybe being a wonderful character, who's been able to open the doorways for many people and to certainly make huge contributions in society. But we've seen the power of one when they're negative and when they are evil and they really want to destroy. So our challenge for us individually is what kind of a person are, are you going to be and am I going to be? Will I be the kind of person that can lift up other people and can help them to make life a little easier? Or will I be the person in the corner bad-mouthing and tearing down people that I work with, or people that are in my family, or people that are in my neighborhood? You see, we have those cho choices every day. And one of the things I can tell you is I've had such a pleasure. It's been such a wonderful thing for me to be able to have an opportunity to interview people on this show and to learn their stories, to find out what challenge they went through, and then what changes did it make in their lives? How did it make them a different person than they would have been if that had never happened to them? And that's the kind of person I'm always looking for because they're my heroes. And they're the people that I can say, look, they went through this, but look how great a life they've got. Look what amazing contributions they can give to our world. Look how wonderful they are at interacting with other people and making others feel wonderful at a time that many others would make them feel sorry for them. I was on Facebook this afternoon and I saw one of the posts by a good friend of mine that she was describing how she went through having a stroke years ago as a young woman. And she said, I celebrate life every single day. I am not celebrating how many years ago this happened. I'm saying it happened, but now I make every day count. And I want to challenge you that if you're listening to this show week in and week out, that that's the kind of message that we want to give our listeners is to make people feel like I can do it and that you can do it and that together we can move mountains, that we can start movements that will benefit the people who are strong struggling on a day-to-day -day basis. And you know who I'm talking about, because we're talking about people who are literally caring for someone in their life and maybe giving their life to care for that person. We're seeing people who have disabilities rise up and teach us lessons of hope and courage and how they have changed the world by just their attitude of not giving up. We are so excited to be able to share these stories. And tonight, I am so blessed to have Dr. Shelley Stravitz with me because I've had her on here before and I will continue to have her whenever I can because she has a story to tell and she will be able to help us find ways that we can make a difference, especially with families who have a child with autism. And I want to get you to please go get a pencil, a piece of paper get a drink of water, and be ready for you to sit down and listen to our program tonight. If you're interested in calling in, our number is 866-451-1451. And I do want to tell you, I have a book out that's on Amazon. It's, it is called It Takes Courage to Be a Caregiver. I've definitely been a caregiver most of my life. And so I can tell you that a lot of the stories that I got for that book came from this program, but also personal. They were 
personal because I felt like they were things that I could share with you that might help make a difference in your own family. So tonight we're going to be ready to listen when we come back to an amazing woman's uh, brilliance, just telling us some things that we might not know that we should know. So we'll be back in just a moment. We're going to commercial, and when we come back, we'll be ready to start our questions and let Dr. Shelley take us through a wonderful program tonight. We'll be back in just a moment. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. All right. Well, I know that you are very anxious to hear Dr. Shelley, especially if you've heard her on my program before, because every time you hear her, it will be a new program because she's got a lot of wisdom to share with us. And so, Dr. Shelley, tell me just real quickly why we should listen to you. What is you what made you go the field that you're in right now? Well, thank you, Cheryl, and thank you for inviting me back once again. So very briefly, um, I actually was uh, going into the moving from education into the health psychology field when our very much wanted second child was born prematurely and we were told that he would not survive. And at that point, if the doctors didn't have any answers, I don't know what got me to do this, but I basically said, fine, then get out of my way. I, it was literally, I was just <laughs> listening to what I was told, you know? And um, not only did he, by my standing over him all night and just repeating over and over again how much he was loved and and all of the people with us currently and and those who'd passed who loved him so much. And in the, when the doctors returned in the morning, shocked. They didn't know why, but not only had he survived, but um, he thrived. And one year later, um, I was told that from a developmental standpoint, he was a, to quote the team that kept an eye on him for a year, a gem. So <clears throat> that sounded great. And one month later, he disappeared the child who was singing with me and loved me to read with him and enjoyed his older brother had no idea that I was in the room, that I was calling his name. He had already been speaking. Um, he was gone. And so I took him back to this team who had seen him every month, at which point with further testing, I was informed that he was at the most severe and profound uh, point in autism one month later. Um, 
that he was severely, the term then was mentally retarded, that he would never form words and he would never know me again. And um, tell you the truth, we, we did what most parents do. We ran around desperately trying to find answers to help him. And what we saw was that, if anything, what was being offered was, um, was just pushing him further away. And we reached a point when he was about two and a half where we decided none of these therapies were helping him. And so my husband and I and our older son decided, okay, then we'll just do it ourselves. And uh, <clears throat> it was at a time when there was so little known because my this son now is 27. But um, we did develop uh, an individualized developmental program for him uh, where we followed his lead and we followed him completely out of autism and it turned out that he had a near genius IQ and for the child who was well, not supposed to be able to, to speak just try to stop him <laughs> so he's um, that's so awesome <laughs> it, <laughs> so that kind of yeah. the direction yeah. of the well, that told me the direction that I was meant to go in, and at the, it, what was interesting was, since we were inventing it, uh, clinicians came and joined us because they wanted to, I said, as long as you do it the way we're developing, and so clinicians learned along with us um, what would really help this individual child, and at the same time, um, there were, back at that time, there were... Um, there were many researchers who were doing fantastic work, but since they didn't have big, expensive universities behind them, you didn't hear about this work. So I then, um, because of my previous profession, I trained with, um, with these incredible, groundbreaking people um, and was trained and certified not just for my child, but truthfully, as he went off to... Um, preschool, um, these clinicians then invited me to come work in their practices. And so I did work clinically and at the same time developed a consulting practice, which, which, um, which eventually became a, a practice nationally and worldwide over a 25-year period. And at the same time, while I was speaking to 8 to 12 families a day, um, I also realized that, uh, that the prevailing attitude was that, uh, among doctors, was that um, autism was irreversible and incurable. And meanwhile, I'd seen not only my own child be completely declassified, but also all the children whose families uh, had been working with me. All of their children were doing beautifully. So I said, okay, well, if, if what we need... As parents, uh, as the people who know our children best, uh, is for me to become Dr. Shelley so that parents could say, you know, I heard it from this, this doctor. That's what I did. And 12 years after that, that's what I did. Uh, and so in the process, we did a, we did a, um, and a, a very extensive evaluation study of all of the families who, uh, who had worked in this program. Uh, all of their children were different. None of the families had anything in common. The only thing they had in common was they really wanted to help their child. And um, in the end, now, the uh, can health I just evaluation... Say right here, the, you, mm -hmm? yep. I just want to say right here, I hope people are listening. This is what parents do when they don't want to take no for an answer. They mm -hmm. become the most reputable person to go to. Dr. Shelley, what you've done and what you are continuing to do is amazing. And it's because you were in a situation you wanted it different for your own child. I love that. I just, mm -hmm. I want to just um, let people think about that for a moment because I don't know who you are out there as a listener, but if you know any family who has a child with autism, when we go to commercial, I want you to call them immediately. Tell them to get on the phone or get on the computer. 
listen to this program. It will change their lives if they want it to, because there will be information given to you that will be able to let you find out what Dr. Shelley is going to tell us in a few minutes. You are listening to BBM Global Network, and I am Cheryl Jennings, your host, every week on Courage to Overcome. I am so happy that you are interested in this program and that we want to change America. We want to change the world and help people learn how can we not have so many children that are diagnosed with so many problems. And autism is one of the fastest growing things that's happening right now. And tonight, I am so happy because Dr. Shelley is going to tell us a little bit about information that you probably do not know about the changes in diagnosis and how it's happening. We will go to a break. When we come back, I want you to know you have got the expert on this line who is going to help us from here. We'll be back in just a moment. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. All right, let's get ready now. Buckle your seats. Dr. Shelley, I would love for you to start by just telling us a little bit of the changes and how the diagnosing is changing for the parents who already have children that have been diagnosed and those that will be coming along that haven't been. Just start us off and tell us anything about that that you possibly can. Sure. Absolutely. Um, and I did want to say, though, that the, re- the result of our health evaluation research, which I think is really important based on the comment you made before, and I'll go right into this after, um, aside from how well ever, all the parents and their children did, was um, that we realized that, except for my own child, I had never been with any of those children. So the call out from the educators, the clinicians, the parents, the autism interventionists, and so on, all was um, just provide us with understandable education. And we know our child. We know our family situation. We know our community. And that's what they did because I, I was never, ever in the room with those children. Today I know them because they're adults to me. Isn't that amazing? Oh, so that was the reason why we are now, uh, we are just about to launch, um, not today, not tomorrow, uh, our um, nonprofit uh, 5013C um, free access um, educational website uh, for um, 
parents and all of the important people in a child's life so that everyone can have basic foundational understanding of how effective these relationship-based developmental approaches truly are and how these can be individualized for your own unique child because no matter what the diagnosis may have been before, every one of these children is completely an individual, even if you're looking at identical twins. It takes me about five seconds. I know who's who because their autism is different. So now I will go to what's happened to the diagnosis. Well, uh, up until December of 2013, the diagnosis for autism remained pretty much the same. There were three, there were three main criteria, and the, they were the same three criteria that had first been um, described by Leo Kanner, who we'll call the child, the uh, father of child psychiatry. But the first thing I'd like you to understand is that the, um, what's called the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, is basically the handbook that's used by healthcare professionals and insurance companies and school systems to determine um, autism spectrum disorders and other conditions, okay? And up until, um, <clears throat> there have been many variations, but until uh, December 2013, those three main criteria w represented an autism disorder diagnosis. Now, there were many subgroups at that time. Um, there were children who were diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome or pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified, which parents might know as PDD-NOS. Um, and um, there was high-functioning autism, and there was mild and moderate autism, right? So there were a number of categories. Well, um, in December of 2013, the new DSM-5 was published, and um, and what happened was that they um, completely did away with all of those differences in diagnosis and, according to them, uh, put all of these under the umbrella of autism spectrum disorder, ASD. Okay? Now, they felt, uh, meaning the, and the DSM is written by the uh, work groups at of the American Psychiatric Association. So psychiatrists, researchers in psychiatry are writing uh, these, this diagnostic information. And so what that meant was if you had any of, if your child was diagnosed before that time, then pretty much the assumption was your child would remain with their previous diagnosis. And then any child diagnosed after December 2013 would get this ASD diagnosis. Now, to me, autis an autism spectrum disorder would mean a range of disorders, right, which is what we had before. But actually, what was determined by this group was to go for something that they referred to as specificity rather than, I'll explain it, rather than sensitivity. And essentially what that boils down to for us as parents and for me as someone who wants you to understand uh, what's been happening, what this means is they were attempting to make, to make it more, more clear for people who were doing a diagnosis of what the specific criteria had to be. What did they have to see? Well, in doing so, they narrowed the criteria. There used to be three specific areas that your child had to demonstrate. Now there's two areas, and they basically put, they dropped any um, uh, issue of um, speech. And all what we're looking at now is um, children with um, Okay, social issues and repetitive behaviors. And I'll tell you how that's going to affect you. 
Okay, now you're saying that they took away the speech part? That is just incredible that they would do this. Okay, I'm telling you, I, if you know anybody who has a family that you're close to that you can call and say, get on this line, they need to know these changes that are happening. You are so lucky tonight to be listening to Dr. Shelley and Stravitz who has done all this research and is putting together information that will be free for you to find out how you can use it to help your own child or a child that you're maybe working with at school. I mean, this is such a wonderful program that's coming out. We will be back in a moment. And if you want to call in, you're welcome to. The number once again is 866-451-1451. That's 866-451-1451. And we'll be back in just a moment. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, Clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Okay, welcome back to Courage to Overcome. And tonight we're just learning some of the changes that are, have been going on that you as a parent may not even know. And I am so glad that Dr. Shelley is opening our eyes to understand this and to understand how they've narrowed the search down and how it will affect schools, education, insurance. Those are things we don't know yet, how it's going to change all of the ways that you need to find help. Um, and having gone through a school system with a child with cerebral palsy, I know the one thing they always bring up is how much it costs for each child. And especially if yours needs a little more on some things than others, they, that's something that the parents have to go up and fight against, is not to be discriminated against because your child needs something extra. Okay, I'm not going to take your time. I want you to tell us if they've narrowed this down where they can only diagnose a child with autism now, with social and repetitive behaviors and they've dropped speech. Tell us what this means a little bit more. This is shocking. Okay. So what they've done is they've said they've created a new diagnosis in the DSM-5 called social pragmatic communication disorder. Pragmatics means you can read the situation and then you know how to be socially appropriate uh, in your communication because you can read the situation around you, okay? So anyone who has a marked deficit in, a, in social communication 
but their other symptoms don't meet the criteria for autism spectrum disorder would be evaluated for the social pragmatic disorder. Here's the problem. Um, first of all, in, the, in going for specificity, and I want you to know that many researchers, even the people who wrote the previous diagnostic manual, had real questions about this because when you narrow a diagnosis like this, um, it, leaves, it leaves a lot of questions about how this is going to affect real people, right? So, um, right. What we were, so, so anyone who is diagnosed or any child who is diagnosed after December 2013 would be diagnosed under the DSM-5. We were told when this was written that if your child had been diagnosed under the DSM-4, which was the previous one, so if you have an, uh, a PDD diagnosis or an Asperger's diagnosis, that you would, main, you would hold on to that diagnosis, okay? Now, here's the rub. The, the problem is that no matter how I look, we have yet to see how this is affecting um, the number of children who are actually receiving an appropriate diagnosis and therefore uh, are being offered appropriate services. So let me explain what that means. Basically, what they've done is they've said, we're going we're, we're gonna to narrow this down so that doctors couldn't miss it, you know, a football field away because these will be, and mine was, the most severe children. And they've set up three different levels of severity. Um, <clears throat> but what we know is that the children who have mild and moderate or even high-functioning autism uh, may not fit this severity category. So... If your child is in school, it is possible that they will refer to your child as having an autism spectrum diagnosis, ASD, right? But if your mm -hmm. child was diagnosed before the new, the new criteria, you are entitled to the services based on when your child was diagnosed. Now, here's the reason we bring this up. If your child would have fit an Asperger's diagnosis, they probably would not fit an autism diagnosis. Um, in fact, even children with PDD, uh, which is pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified, might not um, get this new diagnosis. So one of the most important things is if you were previous, if your child was previously diagnosed under the DSM-4, even if the school wants to, wants to say, okay, well, he's got ASD, fine. But they cannot change uh, what his, let's say, Asperger's diagnosis would require um, um, based on the new criteria because that was received before 2013. Now, what's happening in schools right now, as I'm hearing from my colleagues, is that the schools are not aware of this. So school year starts, and um, what's happening is that um, IEPs are being rewritten for children who had these diagnoses before. And so in, if, in, unless, you, unless you fit that very severe criteria, there's a very good chance we, don't, we have tremendous uncertainty regarding how state and educational services and insurance companies will adopt these changes. Now, again, if your child was diagnosed before December 2013, uh, they, they are, uh, when this was published, basically they said anyone who had the previous diagnosis would, would maintain it. Now, if the school or an insurance company wants to, for whatever reason, reevaluate, you have to be willing to do that because quite, quite honestly, what this has the possibility of doing because what we're, what we're losing is a, is a significant amount of specificity, meaning they're not going to be able to, to look at a child and say, hmm, autism, Asperger's, mild, they won't be doing that anymore. 
so all of those children who, in fact, those are the children who, if they receive the appropriate services, are going to easily do well, but they will not receive services because they don't fit the new criteria. Okay. Uh, and I will talk um, to you about the other criteria. This is so distressing, though. This is distressing, though, to think that children could be left out of being helped because of changes in diagnosis. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Aren't you glad that you're listening to this program tonight? Because you are truly seeing how it's taken courage for Dr. Shelley to pursue getting help for her own child and how what she did for her own child has reached out to help many other people not uh, it, it had nothing to do with race, with income, with their social standing, whatever it was, the children that she has been able to have an impact with by helping the parents have all been able to benefit. So you really need to be paying attention to what, what she's saying about the program that is coming out. You are listening to Dr. Shelley A. Stravitz, and I am your host, Cheryl Jennings, on Courage to Overcome. You are listening to a program on BBM Global Network, and I'm so glad that you're here. Please get a drink, run right back after commercial, and we'll be back in just a moment. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomenon while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Wait No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Wait No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Wait No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Wait No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. All right. This has just been so spellbinding tonight to be able to learn these things that I didn't know. And I hope that this is opening your eyes to things that are changing that might affect your child. And Dr. Shelley, just go from there. What what does it mean? To, do, does a parent have the right to say no if they come back and say, well, we want to change the diagnosis on your child or see if we can? Absolutely. Well, you do if your child was previously diagnosed um, before December 2013. Um, <clears throat> they, they, they cannot insist that the child be re-diagnosed according to the new criteria. Um, and first of all, every parent has a right to say no to any IEP that you don't agree with. Absolutely. Just don't sign it. Okay. Plain and simple. Okay. But oh, if someone great. says we want to re-diagnose your child because now we have new criteria, you have the right to say no. You have the right to demand why they would want to do this. But in reality, I will just give you the overall the over the overall picture, which is that many of us in the research field now, and when this was happening, were concerned that this would then be used to narrow the number of children diagnosed with autism, which will demonstrate that see, there's no epidemic. 
there's less children. Not exactly oh. what we in the parent oh. community know about, that's for sure. Uh, and so it's really right. important that you understand if your child is diagnosed after that time, uh, they've basically reorganized the diagnosis. So the current domain for, for ASD would have, well, the, the previous one would have had domains for communication, social interaction, and restricted interests and repetitive behaviors. The new addition, they took out the communication and social interaction domains. They combined them into one, calling them social communication deficits. And the requirement of a delay in language is no longer part of the diagnosis. Instead, individuals who have marked deficits in social communication, so they seriously have issues with communication, but who don't have the severity of diagnosis under an ASD diagnosis, they would meet a criteria of this new diagnosis, social pragmatic communication disorder. The problem we have with that is that as of this moment, there's really no research to tell us how many, how many, how many children are being diagnosed under this new, uh, even though it's four years later. Right? We also uh, don't know if this new criteria of social communication disorder is even going to be accepted by your schools, uh, by your insurance companies. So this is why it's and, and um, this is why it's incredibly important that parents educate themselves to what their to what their individual child needs because quite often and I can say this because I was an educator for I don't want to tell you how long before this that um, many schools will say okay we'll give you this service but it's not the, the particular service that your child needs and so that's why it is so important that you know your individual child especially if you if your child fits into all those other categories which no longer exist. Uh, and that's actually what we're doing on our fully downloadable educational site, helping you to become an educated consumer, to know what your child's individual ASD profile is, so that you can understand what your child needs. Um, and for the most part, a great deal of it can happen between a child and a parent. So, and that's where the developmental and relationship-based therapies are just so effective. So, bottom line of it is, we can't wait anymore for someone to give us a diagnosis and hope they're going to give us the 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 um, the appropriate, the correct intervention that our children need. Okay. Instead. In fact, in research, since 1982, they have known that parent-led intervention is most effective. They have known that parents who receive some good education about their children, not fancy-schmancy, but good education, right, are the best experts on their nice. children because your pediatrician is not coming to your house to spend six days, seven days a week with your child. But you see things, and that's what happened to me. I saw things that the therapist never saw. And when my child was with me, right. I, got, I saw more. So I think the bottom line about the change is, number one, you cannot leave it to the school system, to the insurance company. You have to be proactive to know what your child needs. And there's a very good chance that because of the new diagnostic criteria, a great many children will not receive, the mild, the moderate, the high-functioning child, the Asperger child, will not receive services. And that's another way for the educational systems who claim to be so strapped to pull money back from services. Okay, so the bottom line of it right. is that oh, that's... no one else is going to do it for us, but we can, and every... Every parent who's done this in the last 25 years has accomplished it and made sure their child had what they needed 
no matter where they were in the country, and they had nothing in common except wanting to help their child. That is so right. That is so right. And I am just going to encourage you as a listener, become involved more and more with your child, whether or not they have a diagnosis of any kind. Just be involved with your child. You will be the best teacher they can ever have if you just pay attention and be involved in their lives. We've got to take another break, but when we come back, we will give you a little bit of information about how you can find out more. You're listening to BBM Global Network's program, Courage to Overcome. I'm Cheryl Jennings, and I'd love to get the feedback from you. We'll be back in just a moment. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colday Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. All right. Well, tonight's program has just been amazing. And I know that you're probably like I am. I've been writing notes as fast as I can. And to understand how the diagnosis being changed can affect our children, the programs that they should have in schools, how they could be cut if they are diagnosed a different way, how it can say, well, statistics now show that there aren't as many children being diagnosed with autism because they've taken away all of the milder symptoms is very frightening to me because those children, like Dr. Shelley has said, are at the best place possible to get a little extra help on the things that are hard for them to be able to make those changes so that they will be perfectly able to support themselves in life and to be able to be highly functioning in our society. And the main thing that to me, I just, I look at this program and I think over and over how I hope and pray that this is making a difference in families' lives for them to understand parents must be involved with children's lives. And if we keep on fussing and fighting in a family until we split it up, when we have a child that needs extra care, we are doing them such a disservice. We have got to learn how to work things out. If you need help with the communication skills, if you need help with just how to hold that family together, get the help. If you don't know where to get it, write me. Cheryl Jennings at gmail.com. Get on there. My phone number. You can text me your name and say I need help. It's 580-591-6868. I do coaching. I do consulting. And I help people try to work these things out so that it's for the good of your child and the good of your family to be able to help everyone in your family to function in such a marvelous way that you love each other and that you care what happens to them. 
Dr. Shelley, give us the site where people can register now so they'll be notified as soon as the site is live. And Cheryl, I have to say, I absolutely agree with what you just said. In fact, we found in our research that of the families who came to us who were, in fact, married when they came to us, there was not a single divorce. And they said that they probably were better parents to their other children uh, and felt that right. their own personal growth was even larger than what uh, their child had accomplished, which was pretty wonderful. So the site um, right now is is up and being, um, and we're making final changes. And we are known as parentsaspartners.com. Our full name is Parents as Partners, the Autism Education and Change Network. And um, we know we have already changed the autism paradigm. It's been done over and over again. There is hope. There is great hope. And what it takes is love and just a willingness to roll up your sleeves and, and then get some basic education about how you can help your child. So if you'd like to, you can register on that site so that when we are, in fact, ready to launch, we can let you know by email um, that we will never, ever give anyone your email for any reason. My practice has always been confidential, but we used it to let you know about new Thank things we were, that we're putting up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with me tonight. And we are just um, out of time. Be sure and tune in next week and we will look forward to seeing you then. Thank you and good night. You've been listening to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Be it Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, or autism, listen each week for an informative look into the lives of those challenged by these and other disabilities today on the next episode of Cheryl Jennings' Courage to Overcome. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.